Hi everyone, my name is Emily from Share Your Career. I'm here to interview Sylvia Corzato, who is a parent consultant and child behavior specialist. So, like our usual semi-weekly videos, we're basically going to ask her a few questions about her career, and you're also welcome to ask your own questions by leaving them in the comments of the video. This will also be put up on YouTube a little later, so if you have questions there, feel free to ask. So, Sylvia, would you like to start by explaining a little bit about who you are and what you do? So, my name is Sylvia Corzato, and I'm happy to be here today, so thank you for having me. No um, so, I am the founder of Success and Steps, and I am a parent consultant and child behavior specialist. And in a nutshell, I help overwhelmed and struggling parents um, spend less time on challenges and behaviors and more time on family time and things that they enjoy to do. And how did you find out about this career or come into it? So it's been a long path, but I've been in the field helping families at different capacities and with their children for over 17 years now. Um, I started off as a therapist working with children on the autism spectrum and um, working with children with special needs. Um, but then I was also uh, in different realms of helping families and uh, since having kids of my own, I really understood the real importance of having these, these tools, this little bag of tricks, I guess you can say as well. Um, mm -hmm. Just knowing the strategies, knowing the why behind behaviors so that um, you can really overcome challenges before they become something that's more intense and uh, you know, really consuming of your life. So um, since having my own kids, I was able to realize how much of my knowledge really applied to everyday life and has been a huge part in uh, helping me raise my children. So now I want to support parents to do the same because parenting can be really fun um, and enjoyable and doesn't have to be stressful. Um, yes, there are times that there's a lot of milestones whereby there's developmental leaps and such whereby there are going to be challenges, normal developmental challenges, but they don't have to be long and uh, painful. Yeah, and there's a way to bounce back. Even if exactly. you, like, no one can be like that perfect parent, right? There's no. always a negative somewhere. Absolutely. But there's and ways to yeah. bounce back. Absolutely. Okay. It's just that when you have the tools and the knowledge, you're able to bounce back a lot quicker. Um, I deal with challenges with my children as well, equally as well, and I have a lot of experience, but by understanding the why, the function of the behavior, or the why behind the behavior, you're able to handle it a lot better. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of your education and your experiences or uh, requirements, mm -hmm. what do you need to get into this career? My career started off when there wasn't really um, set programs um, and degrees for this specific niche um, uh, area. So my formal background is I have a degree in psychology and a degree in sociology. The psychology was based primarily on child development and my sociology degree was based on nonverbal communication. I always knew that I wanted to work with kids and families at some capacity, but it wasn't until I met this child with autism that I fell in love and found out more about um, autism because it only had a small strip in mm -hmm. the textbook at the time, um, right underneath fetal alcohol syndrome, so that there was really not a lot of information. And so I got formally trained um, through Vincent Carbone, one of the known um, instructors for um, AB and IBI therapy, verbal behavior. But then as it evolved, I worked um, with the school board. I worked at SHIELD for many years, and um, I've had many different programs um, and certification um, that I've been qualified for. Um, for example, the Picture Exchange Communication System, also known as PECS, um, all kinds of different verbal behavior, ABA and IBI. ABA by behavioral analysis, RBI intensive behavioral intervention therapy. Um, but then since then, since I've been working in that field, I've also expanded. I have my certification in coaching and I have my certification in working with children and adolescents because I wanted a more in-depth knowledge about how to handle emotional regulation, anxiety, which is a big thing with families nowadays and in children. I see it happening all the time. And it's different strategies to implement. So. Um, although there are new degrees and programs out there um, for different areas, that's how my my career evolved. Right. 
Now, you mentioned that you worked for CHEO, so mm -hmm. for those who aren't from Ottawa, that's the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario. Correct. It's uh, one of the larger children's hospitals here. Mm -hmm. And so you've obviously had that hospital experience, mm -hmm. but what made you decide to do the switch from like a hospital or medical setting to the consulting setting? So the reason why I did the big switch is because although my specialty has been um, autism and I worked uh, with the autism program for 10 years, I realized that regardless if your child has special needs or not, you yeah, have typically developing children, all parents could use some support. There's a lot of parents that are out there struggling and for me personally, um, it was a combination that helped me do the switch or that made me do the switch and it was the fact that when I was working um, one on one with the kids I would see what I was able to do with the children because I had the experience and the training and such and um, many families would be like oh but my child can do but then they wouldn't be able to replicate that at home not for lack of trying or anything by any means it's just I was trained in that area and, and they weren't, and quite honestly, it's, it's different when it's your own child. Yeah. Um, and then I also heard the stories of, you know, the struggles that parents would have outside of support for their child and that there wasn't any support for them. And this is where my heart lies, is to provide the parents with the support and strategies so that they can, they're with their children the most. Yeah. Outside of school, they're with their child the most. The most so. I want to support them so that they can enjoy their time with their child at home and in the outings and stuff like that. Yeah, and so we had met previously just to kind of touch base with each other, kind yes. of know what each other do, because um, I mean, doing the share your career thing is not a normal thing, and your career interested me as well, in part because my own family's experiences, um, which we had talked about, and yes. that is my own brother uh, has autism, and when she was talking to me about the whole when they're with a therapist, you can have uh, a lot of like uh, success with how well they perform and you get very hopeful, but when you come home, sometimes it just doesn't transfer. And it can be really hard on both the child, the parent, the siblings, everyone involved. Um, so the fact that there are people out there like you who can help bridge that gap and help parents uh, transition some of those results back to the home in a realistic setting, not just that medical setting, mm -hmm. is extremely helpful. So it's a neat, an interesting niche from someone who has that family experience. It is an interesting niche and I'm, I'm hoping to support uh, many families. It's, it's, it's one thing to know the strategies, it's another thing to be confident to implement the strategies. Um, and often parents are at the point whereby they're so overwhelmed that they tried so many different things, they don't know where to go anymore. And so I look at each family's situation, it's a unique situation to me. Every family has a tailored and personalized approach because your family to my family to someone else's family. We all have different family goals, we all have different values, we all want to have a different expectation. And so once I understand what the expectation or family goals are, I work with that and determine the, the why behind the challenges and the behaviors and I set the parents up and support them with success and steps. Okay. Yeah. Um, now for anyone who's watching us live right now, I just want to remind you that you can leave a uh, question or a comment in the uh, I guess below the video and we will try to answer that live for you. Uh, and if you see me looking down or away from the camera, it is because I have my laptop in front of me so I can see your questions. Uh, I often forget that part, but I do have it set up today. Yeah. Um, so getting back, so one other thing I wanted to know was in terms of people who are interested in getting into the industry of working with children and working with families, what's something they can do to get into that? Well, a lot of people show interest in working with, with children and families, and it, it depends on where, where they're at, like age-wise. Um, I always encourage people to volunteer to get a sense of um, the programs and um, what it actually entails, because it's one thing to say that you want to work with, with children, and then once you get in there, you know, maybe you enjoy children, but you don't enjoy to be in a, in a setting whereby it's very structured. Um, so it just, you know, the, the volunteering is just a good way to get a sense of it um, if you're at the, the younger age or, or older age, depending on, on where you're at. Um, but to really get into it, there's different areas. It depends on 
where your, your heart's taking you. Um, I always knew that I wanted to work with children um, when I first started off, and um, my, my career stemmed from a little boy that um, needed some help, and it took off from there. Yeah. And so speaking to the volunteering thing, it's something we've spoken to, uh, spoken about before with some of the other interviewees, where using things like volunteering to kind of figure out actually what you want from your career. Mm -hmm. So you can have a general idea or no idea at all, um, but going out and trying a bunch of different volunteer opportunities is a great way to experiment a little and um, see different areas and work with different people so you know what you might want in the future. Um, you can work with families, you can work with children, you can work with children with special needs, um, just to see what you're interested in. Um, and it, it's also a good gauge of how much you can kind of handle, because it is very different to work with mm -hmm. um, children who are developing at a typical um, way, um, and children who are on some kind of spectrum or have some kind of disability or um, are just developing in a different way. Um, so it, it just depends on what you can handle and what you're interested in. I actually know someone very late in her career is actually just switching to uh, the deaf and blind section. Okay. Um, and she's doing that because of an experience she had. And if she had not had that, she would be in a completely different career right now. Mm -hmm. And I know it has been amazing for her. It's just uh, really lighting her up. Like it's a new passion that was ignited because she had this one experience. So let yourself explore. Volunteering is a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, doing little uh, jobs here and there is also a great way, but I'll let us get back to the interview part. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I couldn't agree with you more because sometimes we have an idea in our mind of where we want to be, but then as soon as we physically do that work, we're like, oh, it's not exactly what I want to do. Um, and I've seen that through, throughout my career. Um, there's people that you know get into the field and like, you know what, this is not what I expected and then they do the switch. So volunteering is a great way um, to just kind of get your feet wet to see what you want to do. And you know, even doing stuff that maybe you don't think you would enjoy, you'd be surprised how many times someone tries something and they're like, you know what, I really didn't think that I was going to enjoy this, but now I found a new passion and it takes you down a different path. It does. So did I ever think that I was going to become a parent consultant? No, I thought I'd be working with children. Um, throughout my career, but the path switched when I became a mom myself and realized how important it is to understand the whole developmental process and the function of the behavior, the why behind stuff, because by knowing that, we can figure out what's feeding the behavior, right, and what's maintaining it to, to go on, and by having those tools, it, it, it's, a, it's a game changer. Yeah. It's an absolute game changer. Yeah. And it's really common, too, for people to have those switches throughout their career, mm. too. Personally, I went into school for international economics and development. I've talked about that before, and I'm not in either of those fields. I actually, by day, am a statistician. Um, I tried the development. I thought that was what I really wanted to do. My economics was always meant to be a backup. Um, so I tried international development, and where I got to working, it just wasn't the right fit, and I realized that even in the other areas of industry, it just wasn't sure if it was right. And so I let myself switch. Uh, I realized that for some reason I like data. I've never been a math person, but I like working with data. And so by letting myself explore through co-op programs and volunteering, I let myself take that change. Um, so I just wanted to drop that little anecdote that it is pretty common. Uh, it's yes. actually even, I'd say, almost rare to find someone who doesn't make some kind of change at some point in their career. Uh, yeah. Well, I actually was reading an article not too long ago, and I, I wish I remember what it was, uh, like where it was from, but they were saying like, Back in the day, people would have their job right out of, you know, university and stick with that until they would retire. And now the average person switches their career two to three times yeah. before they retire. That sounds about right. <laughs> and so it's um, it's really interesting. To, and and not only how how interesting how it is that they 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 switch careers, but like it's a drastic change. And you know you have to welcome that because. You, as you grow, your interests change, and the fact that people are actually embracing those as opposed to sticking with something that makes them unhappy, life's way too short. Yeah. Um, so to do that switch and to enjoy and be passionate about what you're doing is a game changer for sure. Yeah. And I'll actually speak to that as well. In the media a lot right now, what you'll see is people 
uh, bashing the millennial group for not being loyal to jobs or their careers. Mm -hmm. And with this kind of conversation, this is why we're changing. It's not because uh, we're not loyal. It's not because we're uh, like just job hopping all the time. It's because we're driving ourselves to find our passion. And that's not a bad thing. Um, I think it should actually be encouraged. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm in everywhere. but. <laughs> So let yourself explore, no matter what those media people say about millennials being this terrible generation of job hoppers and all that stuff, let yourself explore, find something that's right. Don't put yourself in a situation that you're going to run into money, but explore. <laughs> Be passionate about what you do. Yeah. It makes a big difference. And yes. Um, waking up in the morning, getting you all fired up to be at work, you're not looking at the clock all the time. When you enjoy what you're doing, you do not look at the clock actually. Time flies by, just like when we were little kids, you're like, where's the time gone? It's because when you're having fun, time flies by. When you're not having fun, then it's like slow like molasses. Um, so it's better to find something that you're truly passionate about. As an example, uh, time flying, the last interview I did went an hour and a half when it was supposed to be an half an hour. Whoops. <laughs> we're gonna try to keep it on time this time. All right, so the next question is, what are the biggest challenges you find when you're working with parents and families? I know it's a hard one. It's, well, <laughs> it's actually not that hard. I, I, feel, I feel as though um, the only challenge and it's not really a challenge for me, it's more of a challenge for the parents, is when parents come to me because they have tried a bunch of different things and they can't figure out why they can't find that family balance and organization and overcome the aggressive behaviors of their children um, or to develop, you know, have their child listen to them, you know, gain compliance and such. But really, it's more of a challenge for the parents to be on the same page. So when you have one parent that has one set of values or has it one, one mindset of how to, to parent and then you have another parent that is completely opposite, I feel as though for them that's the biggest challenge because we have to get to a common ground or somewhat of a compromise. And eventually, once, once we start working together, um, typically when I'm working with families in, in such a scenario, um, we work with like in, in a, my three month package, um, sometimes extending depending on what, what the challenges are, um, how intense they are, how long they've been going on for, because the longer a challenge has been present, the longer sometimes it takes to overcome those challenges. But within the first month, because um, I work with families on a weekly basis, we identify their strengths and needs, both the parents and then the child, so that we're looking at the whole picture. Because it's not just about the parents and it's not just about the child, it's, it's the whole family together. So once we determine the strength and needs, then we're able to make those, that switch and to see some, uh, some positive changes and the positive impact on the family. So the biggest challenge um, is just to get the parents on the same page sometimes, but it's few and far between because a lot of my families that reach out to me, they've already come to the agreement that, okay, we know that we need to make a change. So those families often come to me already knowing that, okay, I'm ready to invest myself into getting support and services. Okay. And that's actually interesting. It actually answered another question I was going to ask, sure. which was, do you ever have issues with uh, one parent really wanting to seek support about the, the family dynamic or the child behavior um, issues, and then one parent not so interested or maybe holding back on, we don't actually need help? Um, or is that something that you don't come up, uh, come against very often? I, it, I think it's like down the middle. Um, most time, both parents are on board um, to get services from from me. They they make it a, a mutual decision. Or I have people contact me because I provide a free strategy call to get a sense of the services that I offer and if we would be a good fit. Um, and then they, you know, whoever it is that's calling me, say, well, I'd like to speak to to my spouse about it, which. I hands down agree with. Yeah. This is not something that I'd want only one parent to be on board with, so I always encourage them to, to think about it and to get back to me. Um, and um, so, but to back to your question, it has happened whereby I have one parent, like, you know, I said, we need the support, I'm going to get it, and the other parent is kind of on the fence, but once they see the impact and the changes that's happening with their child and with the whole relationship, 
they jump on board and when I'm, by the time I'm done services with them I have both parents on board and I have both parents attending sessions or at least watching the videos or reading the notes um, depending on the type of service that I um, that they signed up for and uh, it's made a huge makes a huge difference so I've never to this day have not had a family that at by the end of services both parents not being on board probably a good thing for like a good show of who like your ability as well then yeah. like, that you can help the families reconcile it yeah which is which is great because once you have what you know consistency is key I talk about that all the time and so if both parents are on the same page following the strategies with a consistent follow through, then there's less there's less um, room for, you know, child negotiating, not compliance, someone feeding that that behavior or that why. Um, because as soon as the behavior is being, I say, fed, um, it's maintaining it. And so it just makes it more challenging for the for the parent of trying to be consistent. But once they see the the big picture of how things can really impact the family in a positive aspect, the other parent typically it gets on board quickly as well because you're spending less time on challenges and behaviors and more time enjoying the family time that you set out to do when you're when you decide to have a family right mm -hmm. so we have about five minutes left so i'm just going to remind you guys one more time to leave a comment if you have any questions and you can also hit like or uh, share on the video and that will help us reach out to more people so again leave a question in the comments um, another one I have is just any general career advice. So our audience is typically uh, youth or students, new grads. So do you have anything that you could suggest for them? Well, we really, really touched upon it in the sense that volunteer, um, take courses uh, that is very broad. Um, but also, I'm a little I. I've been out of university for quite a long time <laughs> in that formal setting. I've been, I, I always believe that there's always room to improve and there's always, you know, there's always room to learn something new. And so I'm continuously going for new certificates and taking courses, listening to TED Talks, all these kind of things because I, I love knowledge and I don't want to become that stone that just, you know, that just doesn't absorb any more information. Um, but really explore um, and listen to new things, read books. Um, you never know what your path is gonna take you, so just be open to, to different things. Um, but also, when you're choosing a career, choose a career that has flexibility. Um, because um, I hear of a lot of people that choose a, a, you know, a particular program that's only good for that thing and it's hard for them to branch out afterwards mm -hmm. so if you do do that there's nothing wrong with it but always think about taking some other courses here and there so that you can branch off on that as well because um, you make yourself more um, what's the word I'm looking for? versatile versatile yeah. thank you <laughs> um, so that if you want to switch or if you want to move ahead within your field you're able to do so because you have uh, more expertise underneath your belt. Yeah, and that's actually something I've spoken to before. Um, taking courses or even doing online lessons, you don't have to do formal education ever if you don't want to, um, but taking courses on something that applies to almost anywhere, and mm -hmm. in today's internet age, that's actually pretty easy to do. Um, things like communication courses or writing courses, uh, graphic design is a big one right now because mm -hmm. if you can help people with that, that's a game changer. Um, marketing. Yeah, marketing is a good one. Huge branding. Marketing and branding, um, just as being a, an entrepreneur um, with no marketing <laughs> experience, um, that was it. That's that's huge. And I've been taking lots of courses. There's there's lots of great things out there. But um, if you find a niche whereby you're good in that, you can really expand on that one as yeah. well. And it's something that you can do on the side on top of your, you know, it can be. A dual career yeah yeah and like I said it's really easy to find these things nowadays there are so many online education sites uh, a lot of free ones even just explore find what's out there um, pick one or two just to add to your resume or say that you have the ability to do them uh, and it'll really open up the skills you can offer an employer in your current career area or even a brand new one if you're making a change um, another thing I'll mention is actually I'm currently writing an article on how 
uh, a way to keep your options open is actually to look outside of your career. So if you are a scientist per se, um, you're not limited to only working in a lab or at a school or in, I don't know, some big corporation that makes scary things that I don't want to think about. <laughs> you can actually do things like be an artist. I actually met someone on Instagram the other day who is a scientific artist. So he's the person that draws the extremely detailed bio biology, that's the word, biology diagrams. I am not a science person. I just thought it was cool. And at first glance, I thought he was an artist. I thought that was his major. But he corrected me. He's like, no, I'm actually a scientist. I went through for my master's of science and I have all this education background. So I'm actually a scientist who is also an artist. And I'm like, that's interesting. You Like, if you go through school to be a scientist, you're probably not thinking about being an artist. But if you are interested in art and are also learning science, that's a whole new career that you wouldn't have thought of. So always look outside of the stereotypical workplaces or um, industries that you could work in. It'll really open your eyes to what's available. Absolutely. I agree with you more. Yeah. So, um, Les, do you have anything you'd like to add before I close off? No, I think we, we've uh, we really touched upon a lot of different areas today, um, actually. Yeah. And um, I just say that for all those that are looking for a career, honestly, follow your passion. Um, because it makes a huge difference um, in just how your quality of life, um, you're less stressed, um, you're enjoying life, life is too short to be doing something that you're going to be miserable in. So um, follow your heart and it really makes a difference. I'm following my heart by um, starting up success and steps. Um, entrepreneurship is not an easy task, but when you're passionate about it, it, it makes the world of difference of, uh, of your day-to-day -day life. So. Well, thank you again, Sylvia, for coming out and sharing a bit about your career. Thank you very much. And again, if you guys have any questions that we didn't cover today, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I will probably send them off to Sylvia every once in a while and I'll reply with anything she gets back to me with. And feel so, free to contact me as well if you have any questions about my specific career. Um, I would be happy to, to, to follow up with you as well. Yeah. And if you didn't catch, her company name is Success in Steps. All right, I'm going to step off so I can shut down the camera because it is not easy to get to. Uh, but thank you all for coming out and we will see you next time. Thank you.